So in terms of the latest developments in uh, Kenya, uh, what we have seen in, in Kenya is a uh, hotting up of the political environment. And, and this is very important because as you know, it's very crucial because as you know, Kenya is still haunted by the post-election violence that took place in December 2007 and January 2008 after the uh, disputed election results. So all eyes are on the market uh, at the moment because there are concerns around what will happen if there is a, a closely uh, contended election. And what we're seeing at the moment in, uh, in Kenya is the polls are pretty much neck and neck between the two main contenders, um, uh, Raila Odinga and, and William Ruto. Uh, the latest polls show that Odinga has a slight lead in the polls, but this is really only a, a very recent change um, for much of the election campaigning this year, uh, Mr. Ruto was actually leading, and uh, the margin of error between the two is so small that what this means is that um, uh, we don't have a clear view on who's going to win. Uh, it could be taken by either party uh, on election day, and this means that uh, the, the political environment in Kenya is very hot at the moment. Um, there's going to be uh, lots of concern around any uh, challenging of the vote that will take place after the election. So in summary, Kenya's political environment at the moment is the most tense and uncertain as it has been since 2007 and 2008. And so that means a pretty unclear, uncertain outlook for the next uh, few months and into the uh, into 2023, even for Kenya. Shall we go through our scenarios? That's uh, the probably the best framework to use as we plan ahead for businesses in, in um, operating in Kenya. That's, that's exactly right. Thank you, Zainab. So here at Front of You, we, we've tried to help our clients uh, navigate the potential outcomes for the election and what this means for their business. And we have a scenario framework that we've developed for this purpose. And what we've done is we've looked at the different factors driving uh, the potential outcome of the election or the different scenarios for the election itself. Uh, and we've come up with three scenarios. Our base case, uh, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail later on, but it's effectively a period of post-election unrest that is contained very quickly and there is minimal disruption for the economy. But we also have upsides and downsides. Um, a downside looks a bit more like 2007, 2008. But one thing I want to emphasize here is that uh, we've actually revised up our base case slightly and also our upside. You can see that the upside and downside um, uh, have quite similar likelihoods. We've, we've attached 20% to the downside and 25% likelihood to the uh, upside. Uh, but the fact that the upside is larger than the downside and also that a combined upside and base case probability uh, is around 80% means that we have become increasingly optimistic in terms of uh, a 2007-2008 uh, scenario um, not being repeated. So we don't think, that, uh, well, we're increasingly confident that Kenya will not see a repeat of 2007-2008 violence for sure. Great, so I wanted to start off by looking at the base case in a bit more detail. Um, there are a few things to consider here. You know, our, we are fairly confident now that uh, the base case will materialize. We have a 55% likelihood, which is quite a high probability of, of, of the scenario uh, materializing. Effectively, what this means for multinationals is a, a very short period of, of post-election uh, unrest that is fairly localized. Uh, but fundamentally, the thing to take away from this is that we do not expect to see the economy derailed by any post-election violence, and we expect things to settle down pretty quickly. Um, so uh, there are a few things that are, are important to, to monitor for this, or a few features to consider for this base case. One is that this will be the result of a very close election result, which will be um, challenged by the losing party. So our view is that because polls are so tight, um, because it's so uncertain at the moment, where there's probably going to be some kind of challenge from the losing party. But the crucial factor behind uh, the base case, and one of the reasons why we are not going to see, in our view, as a base case, um, a sort of an explosion of violence, is that uh, since 2007, 2008, there have been significant constitutional reforms in Kenya. Um, uh, and there is also a broader political willingness amongst all uh, political parties. Uh, that they doesn't uh, that they don't want to repeat uh, the violence of um, just over 15 years ago. Now, also crucially, we do expect to see the court system, especially the Supreme Court, step in if there is a um, a challenged result. Uh, and what we have seen over the last couple of elections, where there has been a dispute, is that the the, the courts have been much more assertive, and also the rulings have been adhered to. So, we do believe that if it does come to um, a very uncomfortable or very uncertain outcome for the election the courts will eventually step in and decide. And 
this will be the final arbiter um, uh, of the results. So that is really our base case view. Um, we would say, however, that you know it's not going to be completely smooth sailing. Multinationals should be prepared for um, a reduction in sentiment or sort of weaker uh, customer uh, sentiment over the next couple of weeks, and especially in the, the month following the election, if it is a close election result. We are expecting uh, retail sales, for example, some investment levels to, to fall a little bit in the um, uh, beginning of, or the end of Q3, beginning of Q4, but we expect a pretty quick rebound uh, and things to get back to normal. Uh, uh, under this base case, we are expecting the economy to grow by about four or five percent over the next couple of years. So a relatively optimistic scenario as part of our base case. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to hear, Matt. I think there are quite a lot of fears that we might have a significant uptick in uh, violence. I guess that is not part of our base case, but more in the downside with, in, in this uh, context. Yes, that's right. So this is the thing everyone's worried about. And uh, a repeat of 2007, 2008 um, violence where you see uh, unrest across the country, um, several hundred or several thousand people killed. Uh, this would really be very detrimental to Kenya's standing in the region. It would result in a potentially uh, a sharp contraction in the economy in Q4, like we saw in uh, 2007, 2008. Uh, and this would result in um, a much delayed recovery from uh, the COVID disruption that the economy has seen. So in our view, uh, the economy would contract at the end of the year, but we would then see growth uh, begin to emerge again, uh, but at a much lower rate. So the economy would grow by about 4% in 2023. Uh, the difference between a, a base case and a downside is that um, uh, it's probably more likely to emerge if there is a Ruto victory. And this is because at the moment, Dinga is leading in the polls. Um, so this is one of the factors that may trigger it. We could also see uh, if, uh, you know, in the weeks or the days uh, leading up to the election or the week following the election, if the uh, Independent Electoral Commission uh, and uh, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission comes under a lot of scrutiny and is attacked by all sides um, uh, in politics, then we are more likely to see a lot more pressure on political parties to challenge the result. Um, uh, we're, we're also um, concerned that if there are demagogues within um, uh, Kenya that decide to take this on board themselves and uh, fuel the flames of resentment and uh, discontent uh, about losing an, an election result, we could actually see um, some violence that is broader than our base case. Uh, we would yeah. also be concerned if the, yeah, if the Supreme Court doesn't step in as quickly as it uh, should do or would be expected to, to um, adjudicate any dispute in terms of the election. Um, but again, this is now uh, a much lower likelihood, uh, around about 20%. Hi, my name is Krista Regani, and I'm the Marketing Director here at Frontierview. I'd like to thank you for watching a segment of this webinar. If you'd like access to the full video and our latest insights, data, and research, sign up for a free trial with us today. Simply scan the QR code on the screen.